Hey everyone, it's Sean from Empire Drone. Today we're going to dive into the distinction between NDAA compliant drones and made in the USA drones. Although they may seem like interchangeable terms, there are significant differences in what they mean and how they impact your business. Let's get started. The first thing to note about the issues surrounding NDAA compliance is that these constraints were instituted to regulate the use of drones by federal government agencies and organizations or any federally funded grant program. This means that state and local governments and private businesses and institutions aren't necessarily required by law to adhere to these constraints unless they are being contracted by or receiving money from the federal government for the procurement of these drones. That being said, as a private business or state or local government, it's always important to know what you're buying and where you're buying it from. So stick around and we'll explore these regulations. And since there's a lot of gray area and room for exemptions, it's important for private businesses and agencies to speak with their legal teams prior to procurement or contract execution. Some immediate examples of NDAA compliant drones are the Teal Golden Eagle, Para Anafi USA, the Inspired Flight Systems, the IF750 and 1200, just to name a few. NDAA compliance regulations revolve around the constraints implemented by three federal policies. The National Defense Authorization Act, Executive Order 13981, and the Entity List. Executive Order 13981 is crucial to determining whether a certain drone is NDAA compliant. This order calls for the sitting U.S. President to be presented with a risk mitigation strategy which could result in discontinuing all federal use of something called covered UAS. It's important to understand the criteria that determine whether a drone falls under the covered UAS description or not. First, drones manufactured in any capacity in an adversary country would be considered covered UAS. Additionally, if a drone is manufactured using components sourced from an adversary country, this would also classify as covered UAS. These components include, but are not limited to, operating software, electrical components, hardware and software components used for transmitting photographs, videos, location information, and flight paths. Lastly, if the drone uses network connectivity or data storage located or administered outside the United States, this would also classify as covered UAS. It is important to understand the classifications of covered UAS because this is what explains the difference between NDAA compliant and made in the USA drones. A drone can be fully manufactured in the United States, which would classify it as made in the US. But if it's manufactured using parts from other countries, it would not be considered NDAA compliant. So that was a review of the NDAA compliance regulations and the distinction from made in the US label that is so common in the industry today. Please note that the information provided in this video is intended for reference only, and we advise the agencies speak with their legal teams to stay current with these ever-changing regulations. I know this can be kind of confusing, so please reach out and we will do our best to answer any questions regarding procurement of these drones for government use or government contracting. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit our website and subscribe to our social media in the links below. We'll see you next time.